Yeah, this morning in the shower I was, uh, was hearing the theme, but today, um, like the last day of this, uh, this intensive uh, on releasing the I thought, being the awareness of dreaming, really just staying in this awareness, not being caught back, caught up again in the turmoil of the world, but just really staying above the battleground being the observer of it all, remembering that I am the dreamer and not the character, not the hero of the dream, and really stay in this, in this awareness and reminding me of that over and over and over again that really that's, that's what it is about. As soon as this life or story is taken seriously, then it's like we're back again on the screen, we're back in the world. And there is stress, and there are reactions, and th things are, seem to be missing, or there seems to be errors, or all that seems to be very, very real. Only because there was a thought that, that allowed myself to really believe, oh, that's what I am. And to be limited again and contracted, and it doesn't feel good when the mind is a natural state, is expansion. To just come back into this contraction is very painful. And so, yeah, I thought that we could just probably yeah go deeper into into this idea today and really look at what is it that always pull me back in 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 the dream on the screen. What am I identified with, or what am I scared of that I keep just going back there? And it's really what we were talking about, uh, I think, the very first day about the attraction to guilt, or the attraction to littleness, to believing there, there are problems. And we need to be the one in charge and making sure the, the world will function perfectly. Yeah, I do remember our movie too, um, Simone, and there's that one point <coughs> where he kind of feels like you know, like this character that he's invented, which we talked about, was very analogous to the personality self. Um, it it was way out of control, and at one point it 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 had to be stopped. And at one point, um, when he went through this whole thing in order to to have her be dead and gone, and when she showed up again. Some word like in, indestructible, or you know, just almost like a total resignation. Like there's nothing I can do. And I think this is where the, the whole journey is leading us. There's a rules for decisions section in the back part of the text, where Jesus, actually in the middle of one of his sentences, he says, "You have no control over the world you made." In other words, the ego made up this world. And you, who, who still believe in the ego, you have no control over your, the world you made. And that, again, contradicts human experience. Because human experience would say that, as a person, I can make choices, and I can control the way the script is going to go. I can control my day, I can decide what I'm going to do, not do, where I'm going to go, where I'm not going to go. There's this personal sense of autonomy that's part of being a human being that is very much a part of the ego system. It's almost part of the ooh-la-la, -la. like, well, the ego says you don't, this heaven thing, you don't have any choice in heaven, but now you have choice here, and isn't it a great thing? And even though there's a lot of frustration and guilt and anxiety associated with it, we have to start to realize this, what we were talking about a little this morning, that this idea you have no control over the world you made is calling you to be the dreamer of the dream. It's calling you to be a lucid dreamer. It's calling you to be aware of dreaming. And there's even one part in the text where Jesus comes right out and says it. He says, the awareness of dreaming is the function of God's teachers. The awareness of dreaming. He's calling the mind to be a lucid dreamer, to, 
to relax and be aware of dreaming. Like pull all your fingers out of the pie. Don't think that you personally can fix anything, that you're personally responsible for anything. That's all part of the stress and we know there's a lot of stress and guilt in personal responsibility. How, how good is good enough? Did I do enough? Did I fulfill my obligations? Did I live up to my standards? And the ego set up the personality self to forever be stressed out about thinking that something could change, something could be better. There's one point where he even says to every script, every day, you add a little bit. You know, he's talking about the ego again, wanting to add something, like sprinkling it with its own seasoning of control. And, and in the end, it's the ego's own desire for using control in the world as a way of defending against the truth as defending against annihilation of not existing. So whenever there's anger that comes up, or irritation, or annoyance, or even full-blown rage, the most important thing to remember is that, that it is not your rage. It is the ego's rage at God. The ego's rage saying, give reality to my fake world. Come on God, I'm going to wait as long as it takes. Just come on, do it. Give, give reality to fiction. Give reality to images. And there's a rage of the ego. You know how in, in the Matrix, the song at the very end of the Matrix, the first Matrix was, was Rage Against the Machine. That was the, the song that was playing. This is the ego's rage against God of wanting to have a separate identity, wanting to have a unique, individual, separate identity apart from divine creation. And hoping that if it, just like a child who does a temper tantrum, if I scream and kick and rage enough, maybe mommy and daddy will give in. You know, we of course tried that tactic when we were younger. Some of us still try it a bit with our partners. <laughs> but, but it's not going to, it never really works, and it will never work. God's not going to finally say, okay, I'll, I'll grant reality to the, the fake images. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So, if that rage is not truly our own rage, it's the ego's rage, then the only thing we can honestly do is give up the ego. Yeah, no, if we want to not experience its feelings. Because our true feelings aren't rage. God didn't create us to rage. It's just not part of our, our creative ability, and it's not part of our creation. But it starts to get down to the real core of things when, when there's a belief that I can control outcomes that really are part of a prearranged plan. It's back to that thing I talked about early on about the script is written. The rage is saying, no, no, no. I don't like the script is written idea. I want free will. And the Course says, God created you with free will, but you have free will in heaven. <laughs> you have free will as you were created. That's what free will is. Free will does not mean free choice. And in this world, that's a common misperception to think that free will means free choice. We don't have free will in this world. There's no justice here, there's no fairness here, it's a world of distractions, it's a world of smoke and mirrors, and there's no free will in time and space. And so if we want to be truly free, we really need to learn how to let it go, and go back to our experience of the Kingdom of Heaven, where we can regain our experience of free will. Because we were given free will, but it's not the kind of free will that the ego likes to think, I'll do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, and you know, whatever, I'll get as many, as much money and as many toys as I need to accomplish my freedom of the body, my freedom of the personality. And some of us have tried that as well, and we still feel upset. We never quite make it to the point where we can go, ah, I have attained free autonomy, and now just bug off God. 
we never quite... <laughs> Even if we think we did, there's, there's still an aging body. And there's still a, a death of it. It's That's like, right. There's something... There's always something there to remind me that I haven't... I haven't actually succeeded at that. And hallelujah. You know, that's why we're here. We're here to, to say, okay, I admit it, I, I surrender, I yield. Surrender isn't loss, we're not, surrender isn't losing. Surrender is, is coming back into the glory. It's only in this world where we think surrender, if, if it's two countries fighting and the one that surrenders is the loser, but not with God. Surrender is a good thing. <laughs> it's the best thing. <laughs> other, but other than trying to fight against, you know, our divine love and divine will. And and we know every day there's those little moments that come about through the day. You know, those little, do I would I rather be right or happy moments. You know, we know that we all go through those those moments. <clears throat> would I rather be right about the way that the ego set this world up, or would I rather be happy and let it go? And then that's what our practice is, that's what our spiritual practice is.